Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, I have recently done a top 10 video saying uh, certain places where you can go to buy currency. And one of the places that I didn't mention that I probably should have is other YouTubers. That's right. On YouTube, there's a lot of people that are doing auctions and stuff like that. And this works out a lot better than a lot of other auctions because the price that you're paying is going to that particular person. You don't have to worry about a fee going to eBay or a fee going to anybody else. Um, it's more person to person contact, which means whatever price it is sold at, the seller is getting more of that money, which means the buyer doesn't have to pay as much for the seller to make the same amount of profit. Uh, if there was a note that was $200, for instance, on eBay, there's a 10% fee. So $20 of that 200 would go to eBay, meaning the seller would only get 180. Well, that means the seller, if they weren't on eBay, if they were just doing an auction, could then sell that same bill for $190, $10 cheaper than on eBay, they would actually make $10 more and you as the buyer would make, would pay $10 less. So it's a win-win all around. And so with all that being said, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Lady Bullion, Lady Bullion's Auction Nights. Uh, Lady Bullion does uh, a Sunday fun day where they do all kinds of giveaways and they just did their first auction. And the only way you get one of these stickers is to be the high bidder in one of their auctions. So of course I was the high bidder on one of their items and that is going to be my a uh, special note this week. So I'll get to that a little bit later. So yeah, just a shout out to Lady Bullion's auctions night, auction night uh, that was on Friday. Uh, they're going to be doing it every other Friday, I believe. So you can look for it there. Anyway, got my thousand and singles. Let's take a look at what I found this week. I got a trinary, really nice shape on this one. Zero sevens and nines. Uh, one away from a binary, one, uh, one away from a repeater, all kinds of potential here. But trinary nonetheless. Uh, let me just slide these out of the way so I've got some room to work. All right, next one, another trinary. This is one sevens and nines. This one is fours, sixes, and eights. And ones, twos, and sixes here. Zeros, ones, and fours. Ones, twos, and threes. I don't know why I always just... I, I love finding trinaries that are ones, twos, and threes. I have the feeling that's going to be the first time I find two paired numbers. Uh, zeros, threes, and nines. Look at that. That zero right there. Three more notes further along, and that would have been a three, and that would have been a binary. So close. Still a trinary. Um, zeros, threes, and nines on this one. And then I've got quads. Quad ones on this note. Quad fours. Quad fives. Quad sixes. And quad nines. Look at that, seven, five, and then six, seven. <laughs> so if that five was a six, or if that six was a five, would have been a really nice radar there. But, oh well, just quads. Then I did find stars. This is 2017. Another 2017 here. A couple more. Nice shape on the newer ones, so that's always good. This one's also bright from 2013. Another 2013 there. A little bit of wear there. A little bit of wear on this one as well. This one's nice and bright from 2009. And the older notes. This one's 2001. Atlanta. Kansas City from 1995. Another 1995. This one's Chicago. Once again, checking for a web note. That one's not a web. And the oldest note I found. Check that out. A 1977A, this one from Cleveland. Um, anytime I find an old note, especially in the 70s, that's a great pull for me. And when I find a note that isn't from Chicago, that makes me even more excited because odds are I don't have that particular note. I will check in my book, see if it fills a hole. Anyway, that's what I found this week. So what did I bring out from my box? Well, like I said, I want to thank Lady Bullion for having her auction. She not only did silver and coins, but she did throw in some currency and some collectibles. So I managed to be the high bidder on one item. And what was that item? It's an upgrade for me. This is what I got from their auction. This is a 1917 legal tender $1 bill. Now, the 1917 $1 bill, this legal tender, has a very old 
design. Uh, if I remember correctly, the the first time this came out was 1869, and it had the uh, rainbow background. So this is what the rainbow notes looked like, minus the rainbow. Um, they did change a little bit around the serial number, uh, but this is the 1917 version. Now, when you see a note like this, I'm immediately taken back by the look of the note, because this doesn't look like a 20th century note. Uh, this, to me, looks like a 19th century note. It looks that old. It doesn't have the modern appearance. Um, you can think of the 1923 horse blanket, which is a large size note like this, but still looks modern. Uh, it looks a lot like what we use today. This, this is definitely has the 1800s look. Uh, definitely a 19th century look on this particular one. Take a quick peek at uh, what we've got here. There's a lot of detail, a lot of scrolling and stuff in these corners. Uh, Act of March 5th, 1863 is what approved this to be a legal tender. Remember, a legal tender is a note that they passed a law saying that so much money could be printed. Uh, that is the legal part of legal tender. And I get in this debate all the time and I'm going to have to do a whole video on it. But that same law that gave these notes their value was also repealed in 1998. So even though the website at the Mint and the Bureau of Printing and Engraving says that all money is still good, yeah, I'm sure they'll accept it, but the law says that this is no good. The law says this is obsolete. Whether the, the Treasury accepts this or not, that's up to the Treasury. I'm simply stating that the law making this a legal tender no longer exists. When you have a law and you uh, repeal that law, whatever it was the law of is no longer in effect. Uh, so yes, this is an obsolete note that is technically no longer good. However, the Treasury will take it, and it even says so on their website that they will accept it. Um, like I said, with all the debates I've gotten into, people are like, oh no, it's still good. And I'm like, really? Well, how come the Treasury won't give me $10,000 for my $10,000 gold certificate? Because the Treasury says all of their notes are still good. So they kind of lose the argument right then and there. But we're going to get back to this $1 legal tender. You know it's legal tender, first and foremost, because it says this note is a legal tender for $1. Secondly, it's got the red seal. It's got the red numbers. Um, pretty interesting number there, 544445051. Almost a trinary. That's all right. I'm not worried about the serial number. I was more worried about the note in and of itself, because like I said, this is an upgrade. The note that I had was posted in a storefront window, so all of the reds are extremely faded on my note. And we'll take a quick peek at the back here. On my, my note that I had, dead center right here, the note was taped to the wall. So when somebody ripped the tape off, my note doesn't have this center. And that, uh, that sawhorse look like that is pretty cool. United States of America. You can read all the stuff here. This note is a legal tender uh, at its face value for all debts, public and private, except duties and imports and interest on the public debt. Uh, and it does go into a little bit more detail about what would happen if you counterfeited the note. But that gets a little tough to read. So we'll just scroll back out on there. You can see on the back it does say Series of 1917. And for those of you who are looking for plate numbers, the plate number is right there. Let's see if I can't get that zoomed in tight enough to read. What is that, 237? Something like that. Anyway, so that is the... Go ahead and focus. There we go. That is the 1917 $1 legal tender. Now let's take a quick peek at the book and see what the book has to say. And just so we know which one we're talking about, the signature on this one, this is Teehee and Burke. So we're looking for a 1917 legal tender featuring Teehee and Burke. Now this one I paid about $90 for. And like I said, it is an upgrade, so I don't mind that cost. And I knew that the money was going to a good place. So let's see here. Number 36, 1917, you can see Teehee and Burke. Um, right there, now it's at the top. Teehee and Burke, small red scalloped. 
in a VG8, let me just zoom out so you can see the, the grading, VG8, 12, 20, 40, and so on down the line. So once again, number 36, in a VG8, you're talking $80. In a 12, you're talking 95. Uh, 150 in a 20. This is pushing the 20 range, I think. It doesn't have any holes. It's got two hard creases in it, but uh, the rest of the note is in pretty good shape. So it's probably around the 150 mark, I'd say. Um, and when you get to the really nice notes, it's $750 if it was crisp when circulated. So, condition-wise, once again, let's take a quick peek. You can see it does have pretty major crease here, major crease here. But overall, a really cool note to have. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Lady Bullion for having an auction. I'm glad I could participate in one of her in her first auction that she had, and uh, of course that gives me one of the rare stickers that you can only get via the auctions. All right, guys, if you learned anything new this week, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. I love reading your comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week.